Let us bow our heads in prayer at this moment. Gracious and most merciful God, in whom we live, move, and have our being, we thank you for the life of Dr. Samuel Huffman. We thank you for lessons that have been taught. Thank you for the example and model that he provided, not only for his family, but for the wider community. <clears throat> and we come this day knowing that you have already prepared a house that has many rooms. For if it were not so, you would have told us. You have already prepared that place. And we know that our brother has crossed the other side and is with you. <clears throat> so as we tarry on this side of the Jordan, we ask that you will allow the memories and lessons that have been taught, they will be forever impressed upon our spirit and that you will bless his family, that you will bind them with cords that will never be broken of love, of hope, and of faith. Allow angels to stand beside them and whisper encouragement into their spirits. We come to you at this moment asking for your hand and thanking you for the life of our departed brother. In the name of Jesus we pray and the people of God who love God may say amen. amen. I'd like to pick up a passage of scripture that I believe uh, is, is appropriate you know, for the life of our brother at this time. Coming from uh, the Psalms, just Psalm 1, just one verse that I would like to lift up, just from several different translations. It simply reads this way, verse 3. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. He is like a tree, another translation, rooted by the stream and river, which yields its fruit and feeds another generation and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever Dr. Huffman does always prospers. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. I'd like uh, for the next few moments that we have together, I'd like for us just to simply focus <clears throat> on the subject of a rooted man, a rooted man. Uh, it was the great Sterling Brown that we learned at Morehouse, Craig, who said in that poem, they dragged you from the homeland. They chained you in coffins. They huddled you spoon fashion in filthy hatches. They sold you to give a few gentlemen ease. They broke you like oxen. They scourged you. They branded you. They made your women breeders. They swelled your numbers. They taught you religion. They disgraced you, but yet you sang Keep inching and on like a poe inch worm. You sang, by and by, I'm going to lay down my heavy load. You sang, walk together, children, don't you get weary. The strong men keep a coming on. The strong men getting stronger. They point with pride to the roads you built. They ride in comfort over the rails you laid for them. They put hammers in your hands and said, drive so much before sundown, but yet you kept on singing, strong men keep a coming on, strong men keep a coming. And Sterling Brown was so right, and I believe is so elegantly places 
uh, the life and legacy of Dr. Huffman. In the southern community of Troy, Alabama, a child was born with none of the advantages of others pressed against the wall of Jim Crow and born in an era when the ghost of the antebellum South lingered in the ears of men and women who had been kissed by nature's son. Dr. Samuel Huffman, yes, was an educator, a teacher, and a thought leader, but the titles do not tell the tale. For it is Vernon Johns who always says there is the day that you are born and there is a day that you die. It will be on your gravestone, but that does not tell the story. It is always the dash in between, the dash in between those two dates. And I would say that he was not only all of these titles, but he was a man, a father, and a husband that Sterling Brown wrote about, his spirit, a strong spirit, a man who kept coming on. And with all the accolades that we have read this day and all the awards that have been given, uh, the greatest achievement, I believe, I would submit to you, the greatest achievement is that Dr. Huffman was a man during a period when the world wanted him to be a boy. Uh, yes, he received a doctorate of education, Alabama State University, but, but one cannot understand that that kind of achievement during that era when it was written into the policy of the state of Alabama that a person of African descent did not have the intelligence to receive a doctorate. Uh, he became a husband, the wife of Sally Huffman, and father to Michael and Craig, a strong man, who kept coming on. So, so what are the lessons that a strong man planted by the rivers of water can teach one? What, how did he become strong? What, what was it? And when we read this particular text, this psalmist, this psalmist is simply trying to communicate to the wider village that if you want to live a life that is abundant, that you must learn how to be rooted. And he was a rooted man. He was a tree planted by the waters. The image that the psalmist uses trying to communicate to the people that, uh, that it is not the external aspects of your life, but when you are deeply rooted in life is what makes you strong. So I would submit and say that Brother Huffman was rooted. He was rooted. Why would I say that he was rooted? Uh, he was rooted because on so many levels, uh, as a young boy, he became the embodiment of what happens when coal is under pressure, that it becomes a diamond. He refused to be a mill worker in the fertilizer mill. No, no, he said that there is more that I must do because his mother rooted him in Bethel Church. So he had the roots understanding that there is a source that is greater than him. There is a source he drew from, a deeper source, a source that is bigger than the Jim Crowism of Troy, Alabama. There's a source that he drew from, that he was able to survive poverty plus racism, and this source came from God. And so Brother Huffman was one who was rooted. And when you are rooted, it's difficult to be uprooted, and that when you are deeply rooted, storms cannot uproot you because you have deep enough roots that are reaching for an underground source. But, but here is the thing, what's very interesting, uh, Michael and Craig, uh, is that as I looked at this metaphor, I realized that it was so many ways uh, reminiscent of your father. And why is that? Yes, rooted, rooted like a tree. Yes, he was deeply rooted, a strong man, standing tall, reaching his limbs up to God. But, but here is the other thing. I found out something about trees, just doing a little research, that trees, when they are deeply rooted and rooted by water, not only do they stretch tall, but they provide shade. And your father provided shade in your life. So that as you developed and you were able to grow, that there was heat and experiences you would never have to go through. He took the heat for you. 
So you never had to experience it. But here is the other thing, that when a tree is deeply rooted, this is what I love about a tree, that a tree does this and people don't even know. Trees will purify the air for you, even if you don't want it purified. That's part of their role. They suck in that which would destroy you. And so when you have, have, have one of the level of Dr. Samuel Huffman in your life just because of he's rooted in God and that he provides shade for you, but he was sucking out the toxins around you so that you could breathe fresh air. And so when you went through school and you graduate from school, you, you just understand that, that there was a tree next to you that when the successes in your life, there was a tree covering you. And you've heard of oaks and you've heard of other trees, but, but there's another tree. It's called the Huffman tree. And the Huffman tree is deeply rooted. The Huffman tree provides shade and the Huffman tree will suck out the toxins in the air. And I may stop here parenthetically, and some have asked me, they said, uh, uh, Reverend Moss, uh, what, what, what do you do about all of the challenges in Chicago with the violence, this, that, and the other? And it dawned on me as, as I was working on this, I realized, I know, I know, I know what to do. I found out what we can do. We can end it within a year. All I need is a hundred Dr. Samuel Huffmans. Because if there are enough to spend time with young men and young women, to have a rooted man in your life who can provide shade and suck out the toxins so that you can develop and grow. Your father was a rooted man. Your father provided shade and sucked out the toxins around you. That's why, that's why, that's why when he's your first coach, he tells you hubba, hubba, hubba to keep moving on. And that's why when you crash your car in school, I remember that, um, that your daddy will send you notes to encourage you. Ah, uh, when you have someone who is deeply rooted in your life. But here's the other thing, that any good tree that is planted by the waters is rooted, it provides shade, it sucks out the toxins, it clears the air. But every good tree, if it's worth its weight, will produce fruit. You are the fruit of your father. And here is the thing, that the trees don't live long enough to see how the fruit will bless others but they live long enough just to produce it and say that I have poured into you. Are, you are more than a collection of the DNA of your father. Your father poured spiritual values into you. And it's now your responsibility to pass it on to the next generation. Your children's children. And there will be stories told. How did you make it? And they will say that there was a great, great grand tree named Huffman who was rooted deeply in God, who provided shade for another generation, who sucked out the toxins and produced fruit. And you are the living fruit of your father. Now, I remember Michael and Craig, you all had mentioned uh, to Reverend Michelle that, uh, that your, your, your father always wanted to go to the masters. I wish y'all let me know. I could have hooked y'all up. I used to live in Augusta. Could have hooked y'all up. I used to go to the masters every year. Masters is, is an interesting golf tournament uh, because you, you can't make it to the course unless they know your name. They, they, they won't open up the doors and they won't let you enter through the gates. Because there's always somebody standing at the gate who's always checking a little book to see if your name is in the book. If your name is in the book, they'll open up the gates and you can enter into the master. And the masters are something else. Because if you go to Augusta, you can't ever find the course. But when you make it to the course, it's interesting. It stays perfectly green all year round. 
It seems as if the azaleas are always hanging around on the masters. And we had a gentleman who used to pick up people for the masters. He was given their name. He would show up to the airport, pick them up, and drive them on to the master's course. And he, because he was dispatched by the owners of the masters, uh, they would open the doors for this gentleman who was always bringing people into the course. It's a beautiful place, and only members have access. Well, I believe in my sanctified imagination that he finally made it not to the masters, but he made it to the master. That the master dispatched an angel and said, you didn't make it to Augusta, but I've got another place that's a better course than anything in Augusta, Georgia, where it is beautiful every day, and your name is already in the book, and we know that we will open the gates for you. And so he didn't make it to the masters, plural, but there is a master who already prepared a house that has many rooms, that has a room for a rooted man by the name of Dr. Samuel Huffman. And just as with any good father, uh, he's looking out the window, but he's not alone. Uh, there's a sister next to him, and they're looking out the window together looking at their children and their children's children, knowing that we've passed on the necessary values that they will grow and develop. So, so don't get weary. You've got somebody looking over in the balcony of heaven, watching over you every night. And so if you hear the sound of hubba, hubba, hubba in the back of your mind, just know that it's your papa. If you see an encouraging note that comes through at the right time, just know that it was dispatched by your daddy, that you had a rooted man in your life. What greater gift could God give children than to make sure that they have a rooted man to lead them as they grow and develop? May God bless you and may God keep you. May we all stand except the family at this time.